Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Happy holidays and Merry Boa Mess everyone. Today is day two of Boa Mess and in honor of Boa Mess I am counting down 12 of my favorite locality boas over the 12 days of Boa Mess. So be sure to stay tuned over the 12 days of Boa Mess to see some of my 12 favorite locality boas and hear a little bit about what's so great about them. So a day two of Boa Mess brings us the Suriname red tail boa. And these deservedly enjoy an almost cult-like status in the world of the locality boa. It's easy to see why. So these guys are truly the epitome of the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor. So you can see this animal, you can see her beautiful peak saddles, her very high contrasting markings, and then of course her long bright red tail, which defines the true red tail boa. And so among the different types of red tail boas, each one has its own enthusiast and people debating the merits of each locality. But I would say overall, the Suriname is the species that best epitomizes the true red tail. And they in general have the longest and reddest tails like this one. You can see the exceptional bright red tail that this animal has. This is an animal from my Prometheus bloodline. This is a, uh, a, a female born in 2016, sired by the legendary Prometheus himself. And you can see the beautiful long red tail. And so this, as you can see, this is actually a five and a half year old female. You might be surprised that she's only about maybe five feet long, but Surinams grow really slowly as do most true red tail boas. Um, also, their adult sizes have been greatly exaggerated. People think that these regularly get to like 10 to 12 feet. I've never seen one that big. And a, a large adult is anywhere from seven to eight feet. Sometimes they only make it to about five feet. I have five feet, even five foot females that are you know, six or seven years old that have successfully reproduced. So these are not giant animals. In fact, this female probably won't get more than maybe another foot or two um, longer than she is now. And so this animal possibly might be ready to breed next year uh, at six and a half years old, but I'll just have to see. The, they are one of the slower growing forms of red tail boa. And so Surinams are one of my main uh, types of boas I work with. I would say that um, out, out of my whole entire collection of boas, about 20% of them are actually Suriname boas. These are my most numerous types of boa. I've been working with them for quite a while. I have a very diverse breeding group with multiple different bloodlines. And I've taken the projects out now into the third generation. So really happy with my Surinams. Although I've said before that I don't recommend true red tail boas, including Surinams, as a first time boa, if you're looking for your first true red tail and you maybe have a little bit of experience with some of the other types of boas, a Surinam is definitely a great place to start. And so these animals, um, you can probably expect an adult will need a six foot long cage. Um, if your animal is truly a giant, it might need a larger cage. Some of the smaller ones that are, you know, five to six feet can be kept in a cage of up to uh, four feet in length. Um, true red tails, as I mentioned, are a little bit harder than the non true red tail boas. They're a little bit more finicky as far as the diet and as far as the temperature and humidity requirements. But if you do your background research and you're prepared, you shouldn't have any difficulty keeping these animals. I think sometimes people make the mistakes of feeding them too often, leading to regurgitation um, and trying to grow them too fast. But if you um, keep them responsibly and follow instructions I provided in some of my other videos, you shouldn't have any problem keeping these beautiful animals in captivity. This is another beautiful Suriname true red tail born here in 2016. And this is from another, a different bloodline than the female I just showed you. This is from what I call my Picasso bloodline. And so you can see this animal has these beautiful peak saddles, this beautiful reddish color, uh, and of course the long dark red tail. And so this guy is actually starting his first breeding this year. The males can breed a little bit younger than the females. So hope to, uh, to have babies from this animal born sometime next summer. Um, you can see what characterizes true red tails are the musculature and they're probably the most uh, powerful and strong of the boa constrictors. You can see this guy is pretty much pure muscle. 
true red tail boas in good body shape will be somewhat flattened. So their height from their belly to the top of their back will be about one and a half to two times the width of the animal. Okay, almost like a loaf of bread. They're kind of square and somewhat flattened. Um, if they're more round or you know not, they don't have the square shape, chances are they're overweight and they're gonna be fed too much. In addition, you should see visible the uh, musculature. You can see this small indentation in the side of the animal, particularly when he flexes his muscles. So this is what a true red tail boa in good body shape looks like. And so when you pick up a true red tail boa, you're just struck by the density, by how heavy the animal is and how firm it is. You know, a very, very muscular boa, um, very strong. You know, they can, if you have a really big one, it can be somewhat challenging to handle. But as I mentioned, most of them don't get larger than maybe seven to eight feet. So it's typically not a problem to handle, you know, for the average person. But uh, again, true red tail boas are Definitely one of the most uh, celebrated types of boa constrictor, and the Suriname really epitomizes the best of the true red tail boa. So, definitely something to check out if you're interested in true red tails. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for future episodes in the series of celebrating the 12 days of boa mess. Thanks for watching, and happy boa mess!